views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to the Astral Insider Show, your portal for adventure, insight, and growth with host Fernando Albert. Fernando, world-renowned lucid dreamer, astral projectionist, psychic medium, brings his passionate energy healing to the airwaves on TransformationTalkRadio.com. As a vessel for spirit to provide all the information you need, Fernando opens the portal for your personal transformation as you join him on this incredible journey within the greatness of the astral plane. Receive answers to many of life's questions, remove roadblocks, and tour the astral realm. This show expands your life in ways you've never imagined. Listeners, get ready for a keen soul exploration and the journey of your life. Now, here is your host, Fernando Albert. Welcome to the Astral Insider, your portal for adventure, insight, and growth. How are you? How is every one of you going? Are you guys enjoying those journeys into the astral plane? I hope so. I hope so because we already are in our 11th show, which is crazy time flies, right? In fact, I want to share with you guys, I have definitely a few more interesting things to share with you in this show and in a few more shows we have coming up. But uh, we are going to soon be getting closer to the end of the season one. We are going to have further seasons of all the topics. You're going to be knowing about it, but... There's still some nice things to share about the astral plane that I want, you, I want you guys to have. But if you are listening to me for the first time or you have lost track, you can always go to fernando.space and find me there. You can find all of the latest shows, the ones that have passed and the upcoming ones. So let's check what we have talked on our prior show. It was quite interesting because we were topic we were talking about a very specific topic, which it was death. The closest relation death between the astral projection is the fact that it happens in the same plane of existence. And I wanted to bring the, why the importance of not having any fear to death. So, like I said, you know, we, there are shows where we have talked about this, and this was actually on the latest one, on our last one. Mainly, there is no need to fear, and this is one of the greatest things of astral projection. Once you are out, you are what I call a living ghost, because you are in your astral body. What's your astral body? Your soul, your true essence. You are connected to your physical body by a silver cord, as you know. That's why you know you can always come back to your body, and there's no nothing freaky or negative of getting possessed or anything like that, because you always get back. Only... During the process of this, the, the core gets severed. That's all. That's why astral projection helps you to realize that death is just being outside of the body, pretty much, in a sort of permanent way until your next life, of course. But you know what I mean. There is no way to really fear it, okay? And in fact, I have always felt very connected to the fact of feeling free from the fear from it from the fear from what's what's going to happen after. In fact, one of the reasons that I believe they're very important are connected to the fact that when you, and it's a little macabre if you think of it in a way, but we have to share this way. When you find yourself that you have crossed over, you are going to feel love. That's precisely the first thing you're going to feel. With that alone, you should realize there is no need to be afraid. However, I always love to advise, regardless of sensing love, always visualize love in your heart and send white light into whatever is in front of you. 
to ensure that the beings that are surrounding you are those of loved ones, spirit guides, etc. Setting the intention to move on only for your highest good. If you approach to death this way, you can be pretty much guaranteed that you are going to go into the right place afterwards. Obviously, no one has gone and returned in the very same life in order to say it. But evoking the law of the free will, no one can step on it. And if you ensure by sending white light that those beings that connect to pick you up, call it whatever, it's done, then you're going to ensure that it's going to be your guides. Because if for whatever reason they weren't, I feel they would just disappear, vanish, or there would be nothingness for a split moment until your true spirit guides or loved ones would show up. So this helps a lot in life, with physical life, because one of the most important things about being alive, it's enjoying life. So why being afraid of death? Death is going to come regardless. So let it be and, and enjoy the moment and live in the now. So the fact that you know there is no reason to be afraid of death, then why not living your life to the fullest? It's like, oh, great, I have lost my fear of flying. Oh, great, then let's go to Germany. Fantastic, why not? It should be the same, okay? Making sure to not allow yourselves to be bothered. Even if there is illness, if there are families with illness, always with white light, it's what helps the most, but don't allow the fear of the unknown to make things more negative. Okay, and astral prediction will help you a lot with that. So, first of all, a few things. Now, uh, I wanted to share or give some advice about astral prediction on the physical plane in terms of, I would call it relaxing from the physical. You know, everyone gets tired at some point and not tired in a bad way. You can be playing a video game for, well, some people, I guess, they can be forever, but the normal thing, I guess, like one hour, a couple hours, you know, and then it's like, gosh, if I feel tired, and then you want to save the game and, and turn off the TV, you know, uh, or doesn't matter the time you play, but it, you get to a point that you get tired, maybe you're off driving, and after three hours of driving, you say, okay, I need a break. So the same thing happens, you know, at some degree by being in the physical plane. That's why, that's why our souls are still project every single night regardless we remind it or not. The problem is that when we don't remind it, it's like somehow the memory doesn't get the, the use of it. You know, this is precisely why I wanted to create these shows to help you guys to find and get that use, to have the recall from it. But I want to share something very important. Astral projection should never be used for escapism. Okay, that is wrong. And the same goes for lucid dreaming, which in a possible future session, we might also run a show for lucid dreaming. Keep that in mind, okay? Make sure to sign up to my mailing list. You can go at fernando.space and over there you will be able to do so. That way you can download also a free guided meditation as well as being in tune for when future or even new shows come up, okay? Because a lucid dreaming show might come up in the future. So, it's not good to use lucid dreaming for escapism, but yet some people manage to do it. But actual prediction will not even work. If you set intention to, yes, I'm sick, tired of this plane of existence and a bazillion more words that I cannot say over a show then you won't project. You know, you will be stuck and even you will get anxious and you will get even more pissed. No, you always have to project from the point of love or for the fact of deciding, I want to take a drive. You know, like, like you could think, I, I just want to take a car. This is a sunny day. I want to take a drive. Where are you going? I don't know. Sort of the same thing, you know. You want sometimes to just ask a project for taking a conscious break of waking life, you know, it's like you're having a very nice dream and you say, okay, I want to wake myself up because you, fi you find yourself is enough or what we do every single day. Well, I think I am done with the day. I am going to bed to sleep. Same thing, you know, it's nothing out of the peculiar. So also I want to say that 
you know, it's not good for escapism. So if you want to get out because you want to escape, aspiration will not be good for you. And if you manage to project, you will not be going from a point of love. So you will not find a astral plane of strong vibration. You will go to a lower plane, to the fourth dimension. So most likely you're going to even have more of Earth if you're trying to just run away from it. And I can tell you sometimes the need of doing that is a big urge, but it's very important to understand that you always need to project from the point of love. Because if you just try to escape, you're going to project yourself to the moment of a problem. Because in fact, in this very show, in this very show, I will talk about the fact of projecting to past moments and also about going into situations to fix for you and for others, okay? Not yet, but it will come in this very show. Now, I also want to mention to you, it's very good for the soul as well, okay? After all, the soul has existed for millions, billions, thousands of hundreds, you know, who knows, others, hundreds, a very long period, okay? Souls are used to be in the astral. I believe that, you know, in our existence, we are mostly in the astral than incarnated, and especially keep into account that not all of planets are organic like ours. So sort of allowing the soul to be free from the third dimension, okay, from the separation the third dimension has, the heaviness that the third dimension has itself, it goes back to the fourth dimension, and it's like, you know, after a very long walk, you lift, you, 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 you remove your backpack, you put it on the side, and you feel like that. And I feel the soul meets that. That's why we get a projection every night. That's why there is a cycle of death and rebirth, you know, and that's why there are many things, okay? And one more great thing, it's the afterglow that you get in physical life. I'm going to talk about, a, a little more about this in the next, in the, right after a break, okay? as well as projecting to tarot cards, something very interesting, okay? So let's stay for a moment because we are going to be back in a little bit. show talk radio to thrive by i am so thrilled to be talking to all of you we have got talk radio for all of us are you ready and willing and able to accept all of the abundance you can muster up in your life check us out with drpatcho.com transformationtalkradio.com transformationradio.fm oh my goodness do you know how powerful your thoughts and beliefs are in determining your experience of your life? Is it really true that simply by changing some of the words you use in your day-to-day -day language that you can change your life? I'm Megan Edge. Join me on Playing on the Edge Radical Change with Ease with my co-host Dr. Pat on Transformation Talk Radio. I look forward to seeing you there. To find out more about Megan Edge, visit her website at meganedge.ca. Ignite your inner magic on Grow Your Soul Radio with Jane Matanga. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as host Jane Matanga explores how to overcome your fears to help you gain the inspiration you need to awaken your path to joy. Learn the way to life mastery and the enlightened path with Grow Your Soul Radio. For more information on Jane Matanga and her work, visit enlightened-path.com. Are you ready to branch out? Take a leap of faith. Then tune in to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills on TransformationTalkRadio.com every second and fourth Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific to equip, empower, and enlighten yourself. Erica will energize and excite you to power up your passionate dream that sets your soul on fire. So get fearlessly ready and get powerfully rooted in your yes to live it up, love it up, and let it go to ignite the life you deserve. Visit GetRootedRadio.com and tune in. Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasic has a special gift for everyone out there. To receive three chapters of the Knowledge Book as a special gift, 
send your email to mmjp99 at gmail.com. That's M as in Mary, M as in Mary, JP99 at gmail.com now to receive this fabulous, fabulous gift of the Knowledge Book. A word of caution. If you prefer the status quo and you are not interested in improving every aspect of your life, this book will trigger the shift out of you. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens is available now. Author Colette Steffen brings the powerful knowledge and life-changing energy and empowerment from the radio airwaves to the pages of her new book. To get your copy in paperback or ebook, visit thetruthisfunny.com today. Welcome back to The Astral Insider. Well, what I was sharing with you, kind of like to recap a little, as I was saying, being able to leave the body consciously, it sort of also gives a little bit a break to the soul because at a conscious level, you are still feeling off from the backpack. Everybody feels relief from carrying the backpack, yet there are some people that they are their entire lifetime carrying one and they're fine with it, if you know what I mean symbologically. Obviously, we can have a lovely life and we are going to be most of it in our physical bodies. But the soul still appreciates doing a walk or two out from it, you know. Um, and this is something possibly very uh, universal for every organic life, at least, you know. But basically for the human one, which is the one we are interested in, it is. So... That's why the reason of this show. Also, something I was mentioning about the afterglow, you're getting physical life, okay? You're going to feel fantastic. You're going to feel awesome. You're going to feel, well, I had already emails from you guys, comments, and in my in my astral projection course, I had plenty of, of mentionings, you know, reviews and everything of people finding the awesomeness in the astral plane because you really get to feel you know, you really get to feel like like Superman, you know. But by the way, you are not Superman still. And, you know, in 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 a couple of shows, we are going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about the ego and, and the fact of being able to, to project and a few more things, okay? But for right, right now, the good thing is to feel a great afterglow and say, I had a wonderful experience. It's like you come from a fantastic trip or you go are in a theme park and you rode a roller coaster and it was awesome. And then, you know, it's like you're feeling like, wow, that's crazy. And you, you're you like super pumped, you know, sort of that, but like much more, okay? So, you know, uh, something I wanted to bring, something very interesting. I personally love the tarot cards. In fact, I have created one tarot deck. It is called the Conspiracy Tarot. In fact, you can read more about it if you go to Fernando that space. And then uh, you search about the conspiracy terror, okay? Or you can just look it up online. You will easily find it. It's a terror deck, a terror deck that you can use. It's any other terror deck. It has seven, eight cards. And you can do fantastic readings with it, as well as it contains a huge amount of self-reflection questions that you can be using for your very own self-growth. I actually personally really recommend you guys to take a look over it because it's going to be fantastic, especially for what I'm going to be sharing now, okay? Two things. One of the things is, like I mentioned, one possibly future show, maybe session two, maybe session three, for now, honestly, it's to be announced. But there will be a show in the future that it's going to be related about tarot cards, about learning to read a tarot and about learning to understand it from a more intuitive perspective and to analyze the cards together. And we will possibly even have fragments of small messages, okay? So make sure, again, to go to Fernando at Space and sign up in my mailing list. That way you don't miss it, okay? So... Do you know that you can actually project to a tarot card? A tarot card is like a story. When you look at it, you can see it like a story. You can even imagine that you play the play button and a movie happens. At least a few seconds happen, you know. It's like an action being taken that has been paused. 
well, you can still project to that to that to that card to that to, to that message. You know, in fact, I want to remind you of something. Everything in the existence has Akashic records. You know, you can hunt for an apartment and consult the Akashic records to find to understand the neighborhood. Is something I have been doing for a while. You know, obviously, any living creature has Akashic records. You know, even years later, as serious it sounds, and they they change the thing that you can have from them. They change, but the tarot, a tarot deck, obviously. I do personally feel it's a conscious being, you know, and it connects with you, becomes yours, and obviously it's going to have its tarot deck, it, its Akashic records, and its card, while belonging to the tarot, to the whole tarot deck, its card has its own individuality, so it has its own Akashic records. So for that reason alone, it's worth to go ahead and maybe check it in the astral plane, you know, in a way I would do it, you know, and I would like to explain it. It's for you to say, okay, let's say I am going to decide to to go ahead and I'm going to project, for example, to the justice card. Let's say that I want to to project to the card, the justice, okay, or the Ten of Cups, for example. Then you grab the justice card and you, first of all, you want to get familiar with the card. Okay, you need to make sure that you are able to picture the card properly in your mind, but not only picture it, but also understand it and feel what's going on. Remember, in the astral plane, it's all about feeling and emotions. It's like in physical life, our brain is controlling everything. In the astral plane, in the astral life, it is our heart that controls everything, okay? So you, while you think of it, you have to feel it in order to trigger it. So this is the same. First of all, in the physical plane, you want to be familiar with the card. It doesn't matter, you know, that you have done, maybe you have done tons of readings and you're familiar with each one of them. Fantastic, you know, but still, I would personally recommend if you say, I want to get the most out of, like we were saying, you know, like the Ten of Cups or like the like the justice we were mentioning before, okay? And then you go ahead and you say, okay, I know very well the card, but you're going to find out that there is always more to know. In fact, when I was creating the tarot deck, okay, in one of the cards, there was a small symbology that hasn't shown up in over 10 years and a spirit has to bring it up in order to to play with the symbolism in the way I felt it was necessary, but to ensure to not miss it. So that's the reason why I would recommend for you, if you want to project, to have an astral projection and, you know, to get the most of the card itself, you get very familiar with the card, that you examine it from top to bottom, even if you are familiar with it with again, even if you're familiar with it already, you want to still deeply familiarize. In fact, I would recommend that you go ahead and meditate with the card that you do some sessions, some, you know, some meditation sessions, okay, with the card, maybe one or two, where you are first observing your card and then you close your eyes and you try to receive messages from the card. But don't ask questions, don't use the card like you use the, the tarot, okay? Don't activate the card as per se. Yes, yes, set the intention for you to receive the essence of the card itself, okay? No messages, no nothing. In fact, if you are, if your mind is busy thinking about uh, I'm going to pay for college or what I will end up doing for vacation or will I will take my kid tomorrow to a doctor, then don't. Then don't do it. Then leave it for another day because you want to have your mind clear and have no subconscious questions because if not, you may confuse the car and you may sort of sending the sort of be sending the question to the to the to the car itself because after all, the terror it's like ready to receive a question and they can feel it in the energy. So you want to yes be able to meditate with the card and if you meditate in the same way you would meditate to ask the project, great. In the only difference that you are gazing at the card, at least for half the session. Maybe even you want to attempt to project right away, but you don't, you don't need to project with the card itself physically in your hand. Okay, You can do it in a separate way, in a separate moment. Now, you want to make sure that you are able to picture properly the card, Okay, that you close your eyes, 
you picture it properly, and that you are able to not miss any detail, okay? And also to try in your meditations to try to play different movies. Since you are not doing a reading and you are not asking questions, try for the heart to tell to tell you by itself, you know, what's the movie? Because I seem, maybe you don't know, and this is why I want to create a show about it, but the tarot cards, you know, when you ask them a question, they will play a movie based on the question and based on whatever it's coming up and, and everything, okay? But also the car itself maybe has something to say that has nothing to do even with you. Maybe yes, its own personality. So you want to just do that meditation to be clear and to, to, to see what the car tells you and possibly might not be related with you. And if it's not related with you, even better, because then you're closer to the fact that you are getting the, the, the story of the car. Like if you see... Uh, five seconds or 10 seconds YouTube video, you see an image, you see the thumb, the thumb of the image, you press play and then you see a whole thing, you know. So the same you want to do with the car, okay, and that can take a few meditations. Once you have done that a few times, well, you gotta, you, you have to do the easiest. Make sure that you go ahead when you are ready, you do your astral projection, you already know the steps, and if not, you know, you can go to prayer shows, and then once you are in the astral plane, make sure you are stable. Always invite your guides in. Why not? It's always a good help. And then set the intention to project to your justice card or to your ten of cups, as we were talking before. And observe. Yes, that. Observe. But one at a time. Don't do multiple cards, okay? So let's say yes, as for an instance. You have, go ahead, you project. Okay, I want to project the consciousness of the justice tarot card. And then... It's hard to explain, but you're going to, you, you sort of are going to be like within the world of your own justice card, okay? And you're going to have understandings that probably uh, you haven't noticed physically, okay? And you may experience even what's happening in the card. Let's say that you project to the lovers, okay? Then, yes, maybe you might feel a rush of love or something, or maybe you want to project to it in of sorts, for an instance, and then you're going to be noticing maybe the things you need to address in life, you know, before things go wrong. So you can use it for many things, you know, when you observe the cards in the astral this way, okay? So after a little break, I am going to be talking about projecting to past moments, because this is also interesting and what I was saying earlier in the in, I was mentioning earlier in the in the show as well, okay, that you could project to past moment, moments or even to moments in this very linear time that we are at right now. But this is going to be happening right after the break. Are you done being afraid to jump into the life that's waiting for you? Are you ready for a real shift? I invite you to tune in every Tuesday with me, Tracy L, on the Tracy L Clark Show, where we will teach you how to live your extraordinary life. At 8 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio, where I will provide the tools and the steps needed to help you transcend perceived limitations and move forward with an extraordinary life. For more information, visit me at tracylclark.com. Learn to live in the light and unveil the authentic you with a time of healing radio with me, Felice Diana, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in every third Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific as I help listeners understand sacred fusion energy and how to connect to the spirit that fuels the very life we live. Explore the journey of spiritual transcendence and ultimately discover the path to peace, love, purpose and wholeness. For more information, visit atimeofhealing.com. Hi, I'm Steve Kramer of Spirit Fire Radio, and I believe that meditation changes everything. It leads us in the direction of greater well-being, and that's a fact. I struggled with meditation for years. I understood the principles, but I found it hard to incorporate them into my everyday life. Spirit Fire's meditation practice changed that. It's called the practice of living awareness, and it's taught in 14 steps. 
These are 14 tools that I can use in any moment on and off the cushion. Steps like smile, flow, and ground of being support my clarity of mind while I'm navigating the ups and downs of modern life. That's why it's called the practice of living awareness. If you'd like to add meditation to your daily experience, the practice of living awareness is free, online, and it's suited for any level of practitioner. Visit spiritfire.com for more information. And be sure to check out Spirit Fire's meditation retreats in Western Massachusetts. It's all there at spiritfire.com. Are you ready to consistently tap into the transcendent place where your whole being is available to you and act as a higher level of ability and performance physically, cognitively, emotionally, and effectively? Then join us on ClearSpeak Talk Radio with Dr. Jeanette Wolf on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in every fourth Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. Go to JeanetteWolf.com, Quantum Body, to sign up for your full health mentoring. People often ask, what does it mean to thrive? On Thrive by Gen Radio, it means body confidence, mind fulfillment, and soul synchronicity. Create synchronicity with God and learn as Jen shares action steps and real stories that will inspire you to be unstoppable in fulfilling your purpose. Tune in live each Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com and visit JenniferZellup.com to thrive with Jen. Welcome back to the Astral Insider. So, what are you thinking, guys, about the tarot cards? Do you think that you could do that before? Well, definitely you can. And guess what? You can do that to your crystal too. So, you know, maybe, and you know, as silly as it sounds, and definitely it's not silly, but you can go ahead and talk to your crystal in the very astral plane probably you already can sense it and can talk to it depending on your sensibility already, you know. So if you manage to project in the astral the consciousness of the crystal, it will be much clearer than just holding it in your hand or or the way you read it or whatever perception you get, if any. But definitely in the astral plane, regardless of your ability, you're going to be able to talk to you know, in the way it sounds, to the crystal, to the consciousness of that crystal, in the same way that to your tarot cards or to whatever spiritual object you want to talk, you know, because in the astral plane, what also resides is living consciousness, you know, it's like to make it an, an easier for our brains to imagine it, imagine that in the astral plane, there are spirit guides, in the higher plane, okay, there are spirit guides, there are vanilla vent ghosts or spirits, you know, they are the northern creatures. And then there is like also this sort of air, like the regular air you're feeling in, in, in life. Well, that air could represent precisely the energy of the consciousness of what we call dead objects, objects that apparently don't have a consciousness, a pen, a pen drive, a cell phone, a brick, whatever, you know, and truly well, you know, truly didn't have a consciousness in the way we perceive it, but in a, in their own way they have it, you know, and especially since they have an Akashic Records in the Asher plane, you can do much more from that. But what I wanted to talk about, it was to project to past moments, okay? We live in a linear time reality, and we understand linear time as such. Our computers work by linear time, we work around the clock, and we cannot imagine linear time. However, linear time cannot be linear when we live in a dimension that is a third dimension. A third dimension object can have a second dimensional object inside of it. So if you really think of it, you know, there is some twist in there. And also, you know, there are many stories, many ro ro romances and many things, many, many sayings, you know, that there are things that go through time, like love, for an instance, loving a baby that you don't have, but you want to have in five years, or loving your, your great grandmother who you maybe haven't even met, or you have met, but is on the other side. So this alone proves there is no linear time as such. Our physical brain needs to understand it, but that's one reason why psychic readings work, because there is ways to check outcomes, to check 
to play with the linear time. And the same goes with healings. And that's why I love to send healing, you know, to past moments. And the same way happens with the astral plane. Okay, like I said, in the astral plane, there is not even linear time. So, you know, it's like it's like a Google search, really. You know, you do a Google search and the server will pull information. You look for something in the astral plane in, or in your records. And if you are ready for it or there are your records and it's your moment or if there are someone else's, you have the permission, you want some information, you pull it, boom, you get it. It doesn't matter if it's something from today, yesterday or in, in, in future. You know, in the future, there are some laws already because we have the free will and we can have some options. And then what we would see would be different possibilities, different parallel realities. That's why in a reading you can set a certain out, ask a certain question, like what's going to happen if, and then you specifically look, okay, what's the outcome for this? And you know, you can help yourself at some degree also in the astral plane, okay? And definitely, you know, it's a way I thought personally that at first the readings were supposed to be done. Then I thought that some people can uh, do it consciously, you know, without having to go to the astral, but to the astral, pretty much uh, everyone can. You only need to hold an astral prediction enough, strong enough to, to receive information. And if you don't, guess what? You just need to practice more. So is that simple, okay? And, you know, I personally love to combine things, to combine abilities. I personally like a lot, you know, shamanic journeying. And maybe in the future, you know, for now, for that, I don't have planned any show, but who knows for the future, okay? But it's something that it cannot be combined with astral projection because it's not the same. But there are some lessons that you can bring from one place to another. And one personal aspect I love from shamanic journeying is about doing some research on yourself or finding something that you need or that you have lost. But to really do it in some certain order, because in the astral plane, you can really just pop in there and say, oh yeah, I want to do this. Boom, you do it. True, because there is nothing linear. But still, if you go with some intention, if you go with some specifics, the energy already will be pointing into the right direction. That means that you're going to get clear clarity in where we are seeking. So first of all, let's say that you need some guidance, okay? You want to feel astrally what's going to be the result if you decide to take the, whatever, to take a, whatever college decision you want to study, you want to study law, for an instance, right now, whatever is matter, really, you need to study medical, and then you say, okay, I want to feel the outcome of going to college and study medical. Of course, you might need more things to keep, into, in, to keep into account. But maybe you want to go to the astral plane and to see how it feels to me to be a doctor, a nurse, a surgeon, whatever, you know. So first of all, you have to have clear intentions before you even project. Maybe when you are doing your pre-projection rituals, if you do any, which, you know, it's recommended, you burn some sage or you do whatever, maybe you take a shower, maybe you meditate, etc. You want to set clear intentions. Okay, I want to see, I want to feel how it's going to perceive to me for being a nurse or in the medical field or whatever, okay? And set the clear intentions to receive guidance only for that, okay? Then once you are able to have the focus, okay, you also may just go and ask the project and get a result. Maybe you are not seeking for something in the future, something positive, you know, it's true, we all have problems. And this doesn't mean that the astral plane is off limits for problems. Definitely not. You know, psychic readings, uh, a lot of them, they do happen for solving issues precisely. But if you have to fix issues, if you want to deal with a problem in the astral plane, you have to always remember something. In the astral plane, it's always about vibrations. It's always about soul energy. And if you guys really go with the negativity and you pursue it in the heart, then you are going to go to a lower plane of existence. You know what happens there? Negative experiences, inaccurate information, wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay, maybe it's hard. Maybe it's hard 
to try to find some wisdom why you had your third car wreck. Okay, true, I understand. But maybe you have to think out something positive. You know, maybe you want to set intention to receive guidance about your car problems, okay? But instead of thinking why the car wrecks, okay, maybe you can just go ahead and recall a good driving time, a good moment you were, you know, with a friend, with your dog, doesn't matter, okay? Driving your car in a sunny day, or maybe you love rain, a rainy day, doesn't matter. Focus on a nice moment and make sure that driving the car makes you feel positive and have the positive feeling in your heart. And then the question of, I want to see what blocks I have with, with, with driving, what problems I have with driving, okay? That way you will go to the astral plane and you will be, you will definitely be, um, you will definitely be really um, focused into the problem because you're going to be vibrating positive and you are going to not go to a lower point of existence. And then you will be able to see the understanding. You will be able to see the reasoning. And maybe you are going to find that simply it has been something that it's something karmic yours. Maybe it's just something that was beyond your control and it happened to happen to you. Or maybe you will have a, you will find healing and understanding in there because something that you have to set intention is, is to set intention and the desire to heal the issue. Well, you receive the answer to heal it. Okay. Because maybe after your third car wreck, you're afraid to drive. Okay. But you need to drive. So you fix it. You go with love, have the answer with love, and then you heal. You have the desire to heal your fear behind the wheel. And then you're going to drive totally fine. You know, and most likely on top of that, you're going to decrease dramatically the chances of having another accident. Yes, for the fact that you're going to feel safe and protected and you're going to feel at peace and that high vibration allow it's going to de-attract the possibility of another one happening. Maybe someone who is fearful is going to attract the next car wreck. This is precisely why you want to heal the, the, the issue. And then once, once you fix the issue, you don't want to continue in the astral plane. You want to make sure that you go ahead, you return, okay? And then you take as much notes as possible, of course, during the process you are there, observing what guidance, what wisdom you are receiving. You want to take as much emotional and mental notes you can, okay? But when you feel that the projection that you are having is going to end or there is no more wisdom about what you are asking, then it's when you have to come to the body, take notes, and then as soon as you can, okay, not if it's 5 a.m., but the next day in the afternoon, go ahead and ponder on it. Ponder on it and ponder on all of the notes and all of the fear and everything that has happened, okay? So now... We are going to be talking after the break about working on others, how you can help others a little bit more, how can you help yourself, and a few more curiosities about, uh, about astral projection and things you can do there, okay? But that uh, definitely is going to happen after the break. Are you your story? Or can you change your story? Can you change what you believe to be true about yourself and your circumstances as part of your healing journey? What if you were to change your expectations? What if you were to invite ease and cooperation into every day and then step back and see what happens? It might just be easier. I'm Megan Edge, and I hope that you'll join me on my new radio show, Playing on the Edge, Radical Change with Ease, with my co-host, Dr. Pat, on Transformation Talk Radio. I look forward to seeing you there. Want to find out more about Megan Edge? Visit her website at meganedge.ca. Are you ready to shift your current beliefs about death from debilitating pain and loss? Follow Angie Corbett Kuyper as she shares that through choice, present moment awareness, and keeping an open mind that anything is possible, even in death. Tune in to Beyond Proof Radio with Angie, redefining death and loss every first and third Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 
on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more, visit AngieCorbettKuyper.com. Stuck in a roundabout of dysfunction? Learn how to speak your truth to power with host Dr. Kathy O'Bear. Create real change with smart tools and smart strategies. No frills, no fluff, just life-changing conversations to help get you where you want to be. Extend your reach and become an agent for real change with Kathy O'Bear. For more information on Kathy and her work, please visit drkathyobear.com. That's drkathyobear.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. If you're dealing with fear and anxiety, you've probably noticed that the more you fight these emotions, the stronger they seem to get. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, explains that instead of suppressing, we need to identify and resolve the deeper, subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety. His personal breakthrough program has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. To learn more, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com and schedule your free consultation with Dr. Schaub now. Welcome back to the Astral Insider. So we were talking about going to past moments in order to find fixings. Now, possibly you're thinking of the future, and that's something that it's precisely what we always are asking about, you know, uh, for probably astronomical and physical reasons, you know, there is no way like to go to the past or things like that, you know. And in a nonlinear time base, like the astral plane, you still can project yourself and go. You're not going to make any change on that, obviously. But you are going to be able to understand what was wrong in that past moment and how to bring healing and how to grow stronger out from it. Because many experiences we have in life they are all about in order to learn a life lesson that maybe we have a great before being born, okay? Now, what I can share with you now, it's that you can actually help others, okay? We have talked in prayer shows that you can help others to project. And again, if you have missed any prayer shows and you want to listen to them, you go to Fernando that space and then you head over to radio and you will be able to find in and download all of the prayer podcasts, okay? But first, you can obviously help somebody to project. And you know, you can help the person to project by getting yourself out in the astral plane and pull that person off, true. But you can also help that person with something as simple as an energy healing, for an instance. Say you are a Reiki master or a Reiki level one, it doesn't matter, or Kundalini or whatever label you want to put it. You want or you feel that you can send healing to the person. Maybe that's what you need to do, okay? But this is not precisely what I wanted to meant. What I wanted to meant really was to help the person by astral wisdom, okay? And... Well, first of all, you can actually help a, a person to heal in the astral. During a period of my my time as a healer, for certain healing tasks, I would go ahead and attempt them by doing it in the astral plane, okay? Especially if they, if they were related with negative entities. The problem, at least in my own experience and in the experience of other people I have worked with, as well as books that I have read, is that if you are going to start channeling healing in the way uh, to heal the other person in the astral plane, you're going to run out of your own energy. Well, in real life, when we channel energy, it is not our energy. In fact, it's not supposed to be. It's energy from from the divine life of source, from the universe, whatever you want to call it, okay? But it's a source of energy that you are pulling from it, like a giant battery, that you are pulling the energy, boom, you're sending it. But when you're in the astral, you are in your own battery. 
because the true battery is the physical body. So if you run out of battery, okay, you go back to the body, no problem. But I guess that you lose your actual travel. So you want to maybe go ahead and call in any spirit guides or any benevolent spirits in order to help with the healing. You know, you can help, you can send healing to a person or maybe you need yourself healing, okay, by seeing the other person heal. Maybe you, for whatever reason, brought a heartbreak to someone and maybe you feel bad about it. Even maybe it wasn't your fault. Maybe you don't love the person. Hey, you have to be honest. But you still meant the damage. Well, maybe you need, in order to relieve that guilt, to project yourself to the astral plane and to ask for this person's spirit guides to help him or her to heal and for you to witness and for you to see how this person relieves from the pain that your breakup has created. And that alone will make you feel better. And, you know, if it's something that you find necessary, you don't have any reasons to feel bad about it. But we are all empathic and obviously you can feel bad for the other person. This way you can heal it. Now, you can obviously help others uh, like you would help in a reading, you know, by visiting their Akashic records. You can either do it, you know, in a reading consciously, but if you can't, then you could do it through the astral plane. And it would go in a similar way. First of all, you know, uh, I feel that you want to either have this person meditating next to you, and if that's not possible, for you to feel in whatever way you can, as much as you, as you can, the energy of this person, okay? And the person doesn't need to re be doing anything because linear time is not significant, so it doesn't matter. But you, in your end, need and you want to feel the energy of your friend in whatever skill you have. If you believe it's none, then recall his face in a photo, okay? And how it feels when you are hanging out with this friend. That's all. And then... Set the intention to have your friend's question. Maybe your friend is wondering, will I do well in my tryouts for baseball? Okay. Um, or maybe guidance for my tryouts for baseball, which is a better question. Then you want to go ahead, set the intention to connect with that question. Like, I want to go to the astral. I want to help Josh. And I want to realize if he can and will succeed and what outcome he will have in his baseball tryouts. Then, of course, you need to make sure before this that you have permission from Josh to enter his Akashic records and everything. However, if you have the ability to help like this and your friend trusts you, will tell you, yes, for sure, go wherever you want, you have to go, but please help me. So they'll be fine, okay? And when you get there, probably you will even find the spirit guides of the person, you know, that will help. Now, once you get to the Akasha, you want to go ahead and yes, probably you will receive the answer automatically. In my honest way, I have gone to the Akasha in the astral plane just for myself a few times, but I access to it in a normal basis without going into the astral plane. But, you know, when it goes there, it feels to me that the energy, that the, that the question will come to you, like everything else in the astral that will just come to you. Okay, so you visit there, you receive, and again, you have to observe as much as you can, try to be observant, try to be focused, try to be centered, okay, in order to see and receive the information that you receive, okay, in order for you to receive the information that will help this person, that will help. Now, then after that, you come back, and as I said, you have to take quick notes on it. As much note as you can, as much as you can remember. And don't feel bad if you have missed information because it's hard. But as much as you can remember, you do. And then you bring that to your friend, okay? You bring that to your friend, and then your friend will have to ponder on it. You have to make sure that your friend ponders on it in order to get the most out of this session. Now, there is one more thing that you can actually do, okay? Okay, which is trickier, you know. In my case, it was done once, it was complicated, but it helped the person, which is for you to influence dreams. As you know, spirits, loved ones in the spirit can influence a dream. So if you are very connected with a person, the same way you can share a lucid dream, you know, or an astral prediction, as we have talked in prior shows, 
may you can set the intention to project yourself into the dream of the person. And it's not like you're going to appear there and take over everything. You are going to shift the dream in one or another way. It's hard to explain that will help the person to be able to have that dream influence and maybe gaining lucidity or having the dream pointed at wherever needs to happen. Okay. So our next show is going to be on the 22nd, as always the second and the fourth month of every month. So now you have more things to try. Next show, we are going to be talking about roadblocks and a few more things that will help you to get even sooner to the astral plane. Okay. So now it's time to get your astral hands dirty, set aside some time every day, Follow what you have learned today and you will be able to be out of your body in no time. Meet you at the astral plane. You've been listening to the Astral Insider Show with Fernando Albert. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you'll join us every second and fourth Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com for this incredible hit show as Fernando takes calls from listeners across the globe to open the portal for personal transformation on an incredible journey to discover an infinite world of curiosities and techniques. This amazing call-in show provides answers to many of life's questions from one of the best, Fernando Albert. For more information on Fernando and his work or To book your session with him, visit FernandoAlbert.com or Fernando.space. Oh, and don't forget to listen to Fernando's past shows. That's FernandoAlbert.com.